I'm Supermoon Tarot, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at a super detailed yes or no to any single burning question you have. Now, this goes out to all my fellow tarot readers, whether you practice professionally or um, you do it for yourself. I hope your practice is going well. Um, so when you read yes or no questions to answers, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, there's no right or wrong, it's just whatever you prefer. Um, one method is if it's upright, it's a yes. If it's in reverse, it's a no. And then you pick an odd amount of uh, cards. And if there's more yeses or nos, you kind of have more of a definitive answer. Um, another way is particular cards, depending on the, what card it is and if it's up or no, uh, de uh, represents yes or no. And then we're going to be doing the third option, my preferred option, which is we're going to be looking at a couple of cards in context um, together. Uh, so it's not just blanketly, if it's an upright and particular card, it's a yes, it's w how they're reacting to the other cards. Because not only does this give you a yes or no answer, but it gives you a lot of context because sometimes it's a yes, but you've got to work for it. And sometimes it's a no, but that's only a no for now. You know what I mean? And context is everything in my book. <laughs> so we're going to be practicing that today. Anyways, as you can see, we have eight card groups in front of us. Um, get prepared. This is as cute as they're going to look. It's going to get real messy from here on out <laughs> just because it's hard for me to control the groups. Um, the way the groups are numbered are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to give you a moment to pick the group you resonate with most. Now that you have, you can go down to the description where you can uh, skip to your designated group and mark timestamp. But let's get started with group number one. All right, let's look at that group number one. We've got Ace of Swords in reverse, the Emperor upright, and the Four of Swords upright. This is a no, however, it's a no, not yet. That is really important for you to hear, and I want you to hold on to that for a second because you are going to do this, you are meant to do this, but just not yet. Um, let's start off with what's going on with the Ace of Swords in reverse. Um, this is when you want to go into something, and that's great. It's new, it's exciting, um, you just, you're so pumped to go about it, but it's, you're acting prematurely. Um, that sort of energy is not going to get you the desired results you want right now. And nobody wants that. You want to succeed. You want to thrive, not dive. <laughs> is that a thing? I'm going to make it a thing. Um, anyways, so you're just not going to be making the best decisions. You're not going to be thinking with the best mental clarity. Right now is the time to hold back and come up with a better plan. That's like the main thing coming up here is like you don't have the best plan at the moment. Um, we get more of a clearer answer and like guidance as to why you're not in the best, you know, mental place. Like what's wrong with all this like great energy you've got going on um, is over here because this is going to be really reassuring to you. You are not being told you were not ready due to like any bad vibes or frantic over emotional, you know, when you feel overwhelmed and you're making uh, poor decisions because you're kind of making decisions out of like fear and anxiety and stuff like that. Not at all. That That's not the case. What we have more going on here is asking what can you do now in order to build the best long-term future? We get that confirmation in the Emperor card that this is something that you are meant to do and it will give you long-term benefits and you are going to be invested in this. Um, it's going to really build up the rest of your life. But in order to do so, the Emperor says, what can I do to have the best possible foundation so as I build my kingdom upon this foundation, I know in the long term it's not going to topple. So they're asking the hard questions of like, is there any core problems I've got to deal with? Um, now, core problems can be anything from, you know, emotional stuff. Like, you know how we have to overcome the idea of like, maybe we think we're not good enough to receive something, you know, those kind of things. But sometimes foundations are like, so like, let's say you're building a business, you know, 
Do you have the best possible options for shipping? Um, do you feel happy with the way your package design looks? Are you prepared if someone needs to make a return? That kind of thing. So you're right now kind of coming up with that plan based on the like core ideas of this situation. Like, is that all ironed out? That same thing goes for relationships. You can be like, you know, when I'm going into this relationship, how do I want to be treated? And what works best for me right now? And am I okay with that changing? Those kind of questions and stuff like that. So know that you're just kind of like sitting and waiting and fixing things in order to then move forward with the best stuff. But also when we have the four of swords over here, this is also about contemplation, but it comes from a more like chiller standpoint. So in order to fix this energy, you're just gonna kind of like take some naps, you know, hold back, go, go uh, do a like relaxing hobby of some sort. Sometimes when we're not thinking, that is when the best answers come to us. That's why often people have the term shower thoughts and you get those ideas when you're at your most relaxed state. Yes, you're working on your foundation. Yes, you're taking a moment to pause in order to like gather yourself in order to move forward to have the best results. But sometimes by doing nothing, we're doing something. And often that terminology is used in a negative light. Like, um, you know, when you don't act, you're still making a statement. In this case, you're kind of figuring stuff out without having to lift a finger. So that's great because um, who doesn't love, like, I don't know if you're enjoying like any current video games or anything right now or whatever your hobby is, you're reading a good book. How great is it that you get to go relax, have fun, chill out, and then also get answers to what you need right now? So in the long term, it's a yes, but just not right now. So yeah, um, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, comment, subscribe. It helps out so much. But let's get started with group number two. Okay. Group number two. We have two of pentacles in reverse, six of swords upright, and the sun card upright. Okay, so this is a yes, um, but I want to talk about some specifics with this yes. So I'm really excited for you because yes, you should go for this and the ending is going to be very positive. Um, you're going to be, a weight will be lifted off your shoulders from in the long term for making this decision. And I'm very happy and excited for you. The sun card is like ultimate positive happy card. But there's two things of note you should pay attention to. One is in the Two of Pentacles in reverse. This is talking about in order to receive this thing, in order to make this a yes, you know, in order for this to move forward with the best possible results, you want to drop one of the multitude of things that you're carrying right now. Now, Pentacles refers to like activities. So, uh, or not activities, like, like uh, physical things. Like maybe you need to, lessen your workload in order to open up more social time with other people. You get what I'm saying? Like, what are, what are the many things that you're doing and can you stop doing one of them in order to only concentrate on a few? But remember, this is a general reading and I'm a big believer of like, pentacles don't always have to represent purely that. They can also refer to like, okay, in all the things in your head that you're focusing on, is there one thing you can stop giving attention and just kind of lessen those thoughts and the goals you have moving forward? You get what I'm saying? But either way, the reason why you're doing that is because it's easier right now for you to handle less. You're going to have the best possible results. You're going to be able to think clear. And that's really important to know because I don't want to like, I'm not trying to like freak you out or anything. This is like tarot always sounds more dramatic than it really is in a lot of cases. But with the six of swords, we're being shown that this is going to be a little difficult to get there. Um, you're going to get there. You have to have that men mindset of like, oh, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get this thing, but you're not going to get it immediately immediately and it's going to take a bit of effort and it's going to be a little bit rough along the way you know might come across the occasional obstacle or like discomfort but that doesn't mean these are huge obstacles this doesn't mean it's like the most uncomfortable thing ever I just want to keep that in mind um, but in order to make the journey a lot easier to get there and kind of keep that hope inside your heart of like, yep, don't worry, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get the thing, this thing I want. Um, again, this can imply totally to this person that you want to be with or whatever. It's that mentality of being like, okay, what can I let go of 
it's going, I'm going to be able to not feel overwhelmed as much. And it's going to be a lot easier for me to um, think and handle the situation at hand. So it's a yes, but you're going to need to put an effort. You're going to have to have the mindset of being like, okay, I'm going to get there. It's just going to take time in order to make you feel hopeful in the process before you get there and also lessen your load. You're going to be much better off for it. And just, this is a bit of a warning. When we get a two of pentacles in reverse situation, this is the warning that like you really should do this or everything's going to fall apart. Not just one thing is going to fall apart because you're overwhelming yourself. Everything's going to fall apart. So if you were like, I don't know, I really need to take, I still need to like focus all my attention, on all these things, or I still have all these activities. Um, we'll get ready for them all to fall apart. You know what I mean? Like, don't do that to yourself. Um, make it a lot easier by, uh, uh saving yourself all the trouble now. <laughs> Again, when you lessen load, none of the bad stuff's going to happen. So very easy, um, answer. Anyways, if you enjoyed, uh, this answer, uh, please give the video a like, comment, subscribe. It helps out like you would not believe. And let's get ready for group number three. Okay. I told you it would get messy. Now we have group number three. We have King of Cups in reverse, the Sun card upright, and the Tower card in reverse. Okay. Um, interesting. So, this is a yes. I'm excited to say it is a yes, but there are some things you're going to need to sincerely, like this is going to take a lot of effort um, to let go of and work on in order to receive this. Now, the cool thing is it almost feels like this answer that you're seeking is unconsciously connected to things that you need to work on and work out internally and emotionally. And what I mean by that is, um, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to like lose, fo I'm, <laughs> I'm losing focus. Um, what I mean by that is there is something that as you receive this thing, it's also in turn fixing something else. It's like, you know, how we're subconsciously attracted to like, um, learning a life lesson kind of thing, if that makes sense. So you're seeking something else, but you're also in addition to receiving this one thing, you're going to receive this, um, uh, positive shift in your life. So I'm really excited for you, but let's get into that. Um, so the first thing you're going to need to work on is the tower in reverse. Now, the thing is the tower in reverse can refer to the king of cups um but you know i'm just feeling like it's a separate issue altogether and the king of cups is more of what you're currently going through it's like the tower card in reverse is what's hurting you right now and has been hurting you for a long time and then the king of cups is like the emotional result from the tower card if that makes sense Sorry, I'm getting so distracted because I can see my boyfriend texting me. Um, anyways, going back on to the card, I will not get distracted. Um, the Tower card represents a long-standing issue that's been in your way. Now, um, it's so hard to just tell somebody like, hey, get over that problem that's been plaguing you for a while. It's not as simple as that. Obviously, there's like a multitude of solutions and ways of handling it, but the biggest thing is to acknowledge whatever's been like plaguing you consistently and saying like, okay, well, how can I start addressing that? What can I do? Now, remember, long-standing issues can be anything from like, do you constantly put yourself down? Is that like a bad habit you have? Um, is there a way that you self-sabotage yourself um, like right before you get success? Do you start overthinking things? Do you make bad choices you really know you shouldn't? Like, what is that thing that's kind of been a constant like thing that's been in your way of receiving whatever you want. It seems like you need to get rid of this in order to receive the question, the thing in question you're asking about, or the person in question you're asking about. But this in turn will also free you in the long term from a bunch of other stuff. So it's a long standing issue. Keep in mind, long standing issues can totally include like inner child work type of stuff. And uh, don't be afraid to, you know, like, start researching and asking questions. And, and I feel meditation is like one of the biggest like problem solvers to like 
pretty much anything and I'm like going to totally make a video about meditation so don't worry about that but anyways the other thing is the king of cups in reverse this is like how you're feeling because of the problems that have been plaguing you in the tower in reverse so the king of cups in reverse is when you're kind of emotionally imbalanced but it's specifically when you're emotionally stunted because you're kind of like how do I express this? Like when the King of Cups is upright, this is somebody who's incredibly um, understanding of other people's problems and able to understand emotional situations in their complexity as a whole. They understand that in order to heal, you need to be okay and kind of play devil's advocate to all sides and all possible outcomes and situations. And therefore they are like wiser and calmer because they're able to fathom everything and handle it with ease and, and be able to make the most maturest, uh, make the emotionally mature, most mature answer, um, to the situation. But in the reverse, it's like, obviously the total opposite. This is somebody who's like becoming fixated on one potential positive outcome. It, it frustrates them to think that it might not work out that way. They, um, can't handle the hard answers. They're maybe feeling jealous and, um, upset of other people's success and stuff like that. And you have to look inside yourself and ask like the hard questions. This was, this is when like shadow work's really helpful. And just to kind of like sum up shadow work as a whole, because it's like really incredibly easy in concept. It's obviously hard to like go in and ask the tough questions, but essentially you want to get a notebook and you write down the uh, uh, a feeling that would be the result of like your shadow self, which would be like jealousy, anger, um, whatever that it be and say, I feel angry when blank. And then the next line, you give a really simple answer to being like, well, why, why do you feel angry? And you'd say, I feel angry because it makes me feel like I'm not good enough. Then you ask, well, why am I not good enough? And you keep going deeper and deeper and deeper until you can't anymore. And then when you get your solution, either your solution cathartically kind of like releases you because you're like, oh, that's the answer. Or you go, oh, okay, that's the answer. Now I will work on that core problem. Um, because anger and jealousy and um, feeling lost are kind of byproducts of a core problem that needs to be healed. So essentially, yes, you're going to get this thing, but you're going to need to put in a lot of work to release stuff and heal some stuff. But get excited because the sun card basically implies, yes, you're going to get this thing, but because you're releasing all this other's baggage, you're gonna be like a whole new person. You're gonna be more free spirited. You're gonna feel more relaxed and loving and kind of just feel like that younger version of yourself again before world the world really took you by storm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or if that's not a feeling you're familiar with, get excited. It's gonna be a, a, a whole new sensation and I'm very excited for you. So yeah, um, if you enjoy this video, please get it a like, comment, subscribe, helps out the channel like you would not believe. <laughs> um, but let's get started uh, on group number four. Ooh, my white balance is going crazy. There we go. Okay, we have eight of pentacles upright, three of canes upright, and seven of swords upright. Yeah, this is a this is a solid yes. Okay, this is a, yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, it it gives some um uh some just general guidance you should work on though in order to receive this as a yes. This is a bit of an effort on your part. However, that effort isn't going to be a terribly tax uh, taxing one. Um, so the Eight of Pentacles lets us know that as you work forward towards this person or um, thing or, you know, position of desire, whatever, you're going to want to just kind of like, how do I express this? Um, you want to work on your like day to day grind, so to speak. So this is um, what kind of activities do you need to do regularly? This is the boring kind of stuff that um, isn't going to be like, it, you know, the best way to put it, it's like, you know, if you're like trying to lose weight, and every day you go for a run. Think of this as like every day you're going for a run. If you're trying to like start a business or something like that, okay, what are the like 
you know, maybe you need to like put together um, your your items you're selling every day. Put together those items. You're just going to kind of work on stocking up. This is going to help you both build up your skill and your craft and your general abilities. Because I say abilities because if this refers to a particular person that you would like to be close to, you know, work on your charisma, work on your um, how good you feel about yourself, your self worthy, uh, your your ability to communicate and stuff like that. Unlike me and <laughs> me tripping up over my words constantly. Um, but essentially, you're kind of gathering up both the stuff you need in order to receive this position or this uh, this success, but you're also uh, developing your skills right now. So the boring stuff is kind of where you want to head. Um, it's going to add up. So it's going to take a second. It's not going to take forever, um, but it is going to just take like a hot minute to build up on this type of thing. Sorry, I keep bumping the mic. Um, then in the three of wands, I can see there are some people you need to reach out to. Um, your messages will be heard, which is great, um, based on all the hard work you've been putting on, like we've discussed in the eight of pentacles. So again, if this is a person, all that like, you know, looking in the mirror and saying like, I'm good enough and working on your communication, as you reach out to them, they're going to hear you. If you're working on like, you know, a business or something like that, all those products that you've made and you let people know like, Hey, um, I have these products available. They're going to see it. They're going to hear it. They're going to respond. So this is you being proactive about putting yourself out there. Um, now this is a general reading. So for some of you, it's like putting yourself out on like social media kind of thing in order for people to see you. But I'm feeling more drawn to for a bulk of you that you need to contact somebody specifically. So if there's some sort of connection where you feel they're going to take you to the next level or this person knows this other person, go contact them, go reach out. Um, they're, they're going to be your connection. Um, and it's kind of like, that's, that's kind of skipping and jumping and giving you a very direct, clear answer of like what to do essentially. And then last bit of a uh, piece of advice or knowledge you should know or whatever is in the seven of swords. It seems like, um, even though this is something where like you reach out and people are going to say yes and respond and be, uh, uh, be like, give you a yes, thumbs up to all your hard work and stuff like we've been talking to, about, you still need to approach this situation kind of, um, strategically, like don't reveal all your cards right away. Like show them, yeah, I've been working hard or like, oh, hey, yeah, I, I think you're, you know, attractive. I'm interested in you, but then don't, you know, put all your cards on the table and say, yes, and now I'm ready for a relationship. Let's be together. Or, or, um, yes, please. I'm so desperate to make my dream come true. Um, this, I do this, this, and this, these are all my sketch work, uh, uh, sketches and like, yes, um, uh, this is all the work I've ever done. Like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I keep bump bumping the mic. Um, take a second and let like, see how people respond, you know, how, what's your next move after that? Keep some of your secrets to yourself initially in the beginning in order to reveal the right kind of information at the right time when you need to. So even though this is a yes, when you get this thing, you're still kind of like developing it and, and working on it before, you, you know, um, in order to keep it thriving. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That's the last time I hit the mic. Um, in order to to thrive completely and make it continue to be a yes, so to speak. Um, I will give you a light bit of a warning with the seven of swords. I'm getting a really strong sensation that there's something you're protecting yourself from, um, in being, by being strategical. It's like, you don't know something yet. You're going to find out about it and you're going to be really glad that you didn't show all your cards right away and you were able to then once the situation arises you're you're able to be like oh thank goodness I didn't tell anyone about that now I can solve that situation or fix that situation so know that it's going to help keep it a yes and help it become the fullest version of a yes is the best way I can put it but there's something that's like it's protecting you from something you're going to learn later um so yeah, uh, again, if you enjoyed this video, please get, consider giving it a like, comment, subscribe. Helps out the channel like you would not believe. Either way, have a lovely day. Um, I'll see you in the next one. And let's get ready for group number five. <laughs> yeah, five. My boyfriend's texting me up a storm of all his little ideas. And who doesn't love that? Who doesn't love ideas? Um, <laughs> group number five. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? Where am I? Um, <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Um, so group number five. Three of wands upright, four of wands up. Ten of cups upright? Oh my goodness, I love this. Okay, so this is like a super resounding yes. Just a solid yes. I'm really excited for you. Um, this is short, sweet, and simple. Uh, your messages are being received. And um, definitely keep sending them out there. Keep reaching out to people. Um, uh, the, the hard work you've put in and you've been like, you know, reaching out, um, uh, just like the hard work, uh, not, not just reaching out message wise, but like internally on yourself and the projects you've been working on and stuff like that, totally working out. Um, it's, you're kind of being told like a solid yes, like you've built something worth depending on and something you can feel secure in, which I'm really excited for you. Um, and then just straight up 10 of cups, like happy, blissful. Yes. Um, this is going to, this is going to be something you really love either doing or being a part of. Again, if this is a person, this is somebody who you're going to have a lot of bliss with and you can build like a sense of like home and security with. And, and uh, just really short, sweet, and simple. Just a yes. You've, you've earned it. <laughs> Yay! So um, that was really succinct. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, comment, subscribe. It, it helps out the channel like you would not believe. And um, I really would appreciate it. Uh, anyways, let's get uh, started on the next one for group number six. Okay. Page of Swords in reverse, Five of Wands upright, and the Hermit card in reverse. Hmm. So this is like a no here, but it's a yes somewhere else. There is another opportunity for you. This is not the end of your inquiry, if the best is the put it like the best way to put it. So, like, let's say you're looking for like a job or something like that, right? The field you're working in, yes, keep going for it, keep looking for it. But this particular position, and eh, it's a no. Um, so the page of swords shows us just like two different. You could view it in two different ways. For some of you, it's about um, feeling like a certain defeatist mentality of like already thinking you've lost before um, you've even really set out, like you're already predetermining it. So there's like a bit of worrisome in it. But the thing is, the thing that spirit's making me feel the most with this, which is interesting because we didn't get like a high priestess card, but it almost feels like your self-defeatist attitude for some of you that have this. Um, is coming from a place of intuition. Sometimes we are too harsh on ourselves and other times we are subconsciously, I mean like we all have psychic abilities. Like I wanna be absolutely clear about that. Even if you don't like believe in yourself or foster it and grow it, it's there. And you're already kind of like picking up on the environment of the place. And it being a no is a blessing. I do want to point that out. And we're going to get to that in a second. Um, for others, the reason why it's a no is the people have already, uh, who have like decided, like, so let's say you're reaching out to be with someone romantically. They've already made their decision about you and it's judgmental and it's not accurate. And they're kind of believing the worst in you right now. And that's the same thing for, again, like position, whatever. It's, there's already the sense of like people predetermining your worth, but these, and I do want to point this out, that doesn't mean that is your worth. A lot of time when we talk about reflection and intuition, like we were just mentioning in the last um, part, in, in many cases, people think the worst of others because they think the worst of themselves. And that is definitely the situation going on. These are not the people you need to be insulted. They don't think the best of you. They're not that great to begin with. Who cares what they think? You know what I'm saying? And so they've already been like, no, we're not going to, you know, hire them for this position. We know we're not going to welcome them. No, because we, we don't think they're that great, if that makes sense. Again, based on them, not your actual worth. We get that confirmation over here with the five of wands. This shows like the, if you had gotten this situation, gotten this thing that you wanted, it'd be nothing but like conflict 
and confrontation, but I feel like the Five of Wands has a particularly bad sting to it compared to something like the Five of Swords because the Five of Wands is, think about when you're having an argument with someone you really care about and you feel like you're both butting heads and you're not able to come to any sort of compromise or um, agree, you know, you're just both like disagreeing, right? And the worst part is, you didn't feel you got any resolution, and because you care about them, you both keep returning to the same argument. So this would be the type of, um, like again, using a job as an example, this would be the type of situation where if you went there, you kept, you'd kept keep feeling guilted to go back and work your hardest, and then keep feeling unsatisfied with the toxic environment around you and the responses you're getting, and then start to confuse the energy and people's, you know, what they're pro they're projecting on you as your own personal feelings, when that isn't true at all. Again, it is a blessing that it is a no. However, the Hermit card shows us that what you have to offer and what you're reaching for, you are good enough for. You have put in the work, you are smart, and you have like self-analyzed, you've thought about the situation as a whole, you've thought about yourself, you've worked on yourself, you're good to go. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you, and you should go out and seek this thing, whether this again be a romantic relationship or again I keep just using relationships and jobs because it's like the first thing that comes to mind or let's say you want to go work out in this field you are good enough to there's nothing wrong with you and you should seek it but another opportunity is basically waiting for you so this is both the confirmation that it's yes somewhere else you can get a relationship or you can get this job that you want totally somewhere else next you know next thing you apply for or, or reach out for but this current one is a no, and it's like a no with a hard blessing, and you're going to be so pumped and happy that you didn't get stuck in this situation. And again, I just want to point out, it's they're, they're really messed up internally, and they're projecting it and going to project it on you. So yay for it being a no. <laughs> um, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like, comment, subscribe. Helps out the channel like you would not believe. Either way, have a lovely day um, and let's get ready for group number seven. Okay, let's get our fall leaves. Two of swords in reverse. Six of Wands upright, and Knight of Pentacles in reverse. Hmm. Okay, so this is a no, and it comes with a bit of context. So let, let's talk about why it's a no, um, because it doesn't mean that you can't, how do I say this? There is a potential to change in general, but there isn't a potential to change the situation. You're kind of like your spirit guides are basically stepping in and, and telling you something important you need to know because while this is a no for context reasons, like for reasons outside your personal, like your force or like whatever you kind of emanate energy wise, there is something you need to be aware of in order to then receive success in the long run in what you're pursuing because um, you're, you're going to kind of keep hitting walls if you take a certain mentality. So the first part of the no is that this other person, this other situation has already been decided and they're going to be going with somebody else. However, I'm not getting any sense of context clues that it was because of something you personally did. This could have been because just, you know, I, I know it's hard to hear and, and we've all been there. So I apologize for having to say this because it's not great to feel, but it's like if somebody connects with somebody else, like let's say somebody else is somebody else's soulmate. I mean, like, what can you do? You're not their soulmate. You're not their person, but that doesn't mean your soulmate and that person isn't waiting for you someone else. You know what I mean? Like it's not the end of the world, but I'm sure in the moment it doesn't feel great and does feel like the end of the world. Um, same thing with like, again, if, if it was a job position, that'd be so heartbreaking. This job that you really wanted didn't work out, but that doesn't mean your even more ideal job isn't waiting for you somewhere else. You know what I mean? Um, but what are you going to do if maybe they're looking for somebody who's very like loud and talkative 
and maybe that's just not who you are. Isn't that better to fit in a job in the long term where you'd be happier and they want somebody who's shy or quieter? And that goes the same vice versa for the different personalities um, changed around. So it, it just is what it is. That's out of your like, you know, what you can do. But the biggest thing I see popping up that your spirit guides really want you to know, and again, I always point this out, but in tarot, you know, tarot and spirit guides do whatever the heck they want. If they want to talk about this and they want to insert something else you need to know, pay attention. It is important. So the Knight of Pentacles in reverse is representing kind of your attitude towards the Six of Wands, which is representing this idea of success. And it does represent your idea of success. Both kind of need to be reevaluated. The Six of Wands shows somebody who believes that when they receive this success they're going to get, it's just going to be like their whole world is going to come into like perfect alignment. You know, everybody's going to want to talk to you. It's um, so amazing. Your life's going to come together. When you get that job, you're going to also lose the weight and get the person that you want to be with. And so it just, it, it's it's an over-fantasized mentality of what success is. Instead of realizing success can come in many forms. And as you start to realize success can come into so many forms, you can receive it easier. Same thing with when you get it, if it's not the exact way you want, how are you going to possibly enjoy it? You're always kind of like putting it on a pedestal and out of the way and out of your reach, so to speak. Um, but also, um, Sometimes when we receive the thing we want, it's not always going to feel the way we think it does. That doesn't imply, and I just want to be clear about that, that, that I'm not saying like, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> not at all. That's not what I'm saying. Sometimes, and I'm speaking from personal experience, I received something I really wanted and it was great and everything, but it wasn't wow and fireworks. It was like, it was nice that I had it, but I kind of just went on living my life and I realized that that thing that I wanted while I should ask for it, and it was great that I received it, and it was a good thing, it's kind of was just as special as anything else. It didn't have the feeling I thought it was, and that was okay, and I didn't feel disappointed. And, you know, it's, again, I just want to clarify, you can ask for this thing, and you can receive this thing, but these, um, your expectation of how you think it's going to feel in the end is misconstrued and should be worked on for a multitude of benefits for both attracting and manifesting easier, enjoying a more pleasurable life. You're kind of getting a bit of a metaphor of how you see things and how they're reflected to you and like how you, um, like whatever you're putting out there is what you're getting back, so to speak. Does that make sense? So the more you think success is nonchalant and easy and isn't this unattainable thing, the easier it is to obtain it and um, the more it happens, if that makes sense. But also the Knight of Pentacles in reverse shows somebody who's like impatient, who wants things just because they want them and not for the greater good of wanting it, not for like it being good for them or maybe it helps others or like like being think of it as like I don't want to think of it in like a world context or like community context think of it as like being your most authentic self like do you really want that thing and why do you need it so much now if if if, if you were truly complete as a person and it was and you really did want this thing you would be okay waiting for it it doesn't imply that sex success is going to take forever in this particular avenue. It just means that if you're like, if you have an attitude of like, why isn't it happening? Why isn't it happening? I've waited for so long. I want it, I want it, I want it. You're going to keep pushing it away. And it's honestly just going to make you super uncomfortable. So essentially it's a no because somebody else is like, you know, they've made the decision. It's out of your hand. But then also be aware of how you view and project and see and receive success and how you go after it and how, um, like, why are you going for that particular thing that you want? Do you really want it or do you just want it now? Um, and keep in mind, and I just want to put this out there as like a PSA because um, a lot of information about manifestation and the things that we want to obtain is like misconstrued. It is more than okay to say, I want this thing and I want it now. Do not feel like everything that you need to seek and receive has to be like the absolute pinnacle of defining your authentic self and, you know, are you a good person if you need to receive it? Not at all. I don't want you to view things in that context. I just want you to understand that when you're 
trying to get this thing right now, you need to take some time to reevaluate yourself in life. Kind of, it's like by re, by seeking things from a version of yourself that's most authentic. You know that kind of thing. You're kind of resetting yourself as a person, and um, you're going to be really thankful in the long run. And then in the long run, you can ask for things in the moment. Be like, ah, I just want this temporarily. I want this thing, and then receive it. So you're kind of hitting a reset button right now. Um, anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like, comment, subscribe. It helps out the channel like you would not believe. Um, I hope you have a lovely day. I look forward to seeing you in the next one and success on your journey. And let's get ready for group number eight. Okay. Last one. Cute little shimmery hearts. Got five of wands. Knight of swords. Ooh, and seven of wands. Okay. Um, cool. So this is a yes. It is a yes. However, um, it's a yes with a lot of gusto. <laughs> because what I mean by that is you're going to run into a five of wands type of situation, which is when there is a barricade because people can't come to like terms or compromise with whatever this thing is. So don't be surprised when you run into people who just won't budge because, um, you know, they believe what they're going to believe. Um, uh, and you're not going to change their mind for it because they're kind of set in their ways, but they also want to keep feeding the conversation instead of either ending it or coming to a compromise. So it's kind of like, a, it's not a very comfortable feeling or obstacle to go through. So in order to break through this blockade and overcome this situation, you're going to want to come at this with a lot of intensity. Um, the five, or I'm so sorry, not the five, the, the knight of swords over here is somebody who goes into something with, um, just complete mental clarity. They understand completely the thing they want and nothing will let them be distracted by their end goal. Um, they come at it with intensity. They speak up, they defend others, they defend themselves. They do not shy away from saying, this is the thing that I want. I deserve it. And I'm not going to back down. So again, you, it's very helpful when you come into this sort of kind of like you know, um, obstacle in your way. But then over here with the seven of wands, this is somebody who is, um, again, giving it their all. It's kind of redundant, like the knight of swords, like fighting for what they believe in kind of thing. But again, this is somebody who understands I'm going to have to work for and push back in order to get the thing that I need, but it's worth it. That's, this is like kind of giving you the confirmation that the thing that you want is worthy of pursuing. Um, but you're going to have to put in a lot of effort. You're going to have to believe in yourself. And it just talks about both the mindset you need to have. And again, the gusto you need to have. So understand that when you come into this obstacle, these are the things, this sort of attitude and mentality is going to help you push through this. But I just want to say this as a warning. Five of one type of situations, it's so easy to be put into a position where you're constantly explaining yourself and they keep pulling you back into that type of conversation or that sort of, it feels like I'm using a conversation as an example. This is a general reading. No matter what your situation is, this could be, um, this could be the type of situation where you keep being enticed to interact with something that doesn't feel like it's moving forward. That's like the most simplified version that I can put it in. So when you notice that's happening, don't let it be a distraction because that's all that it is. It is a distraction. It's an, I don't even know if I'd call it a blockade. It's an obstacle. You'll get through it, but remember to not lose focus of what you want. Don't make compromises and defend yourself and what you want um, and just fight for it. So yeah, <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed this reading as much as I enjoyed giving it. Uh, please give the video a like, comment, subscribe. It helps with the channel like you would not believe. Either way, have a lovely day. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.